Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where today... Oh, there's no moon in this. Why is there never a moon in the sky? Wanna wanna say we're going there. Oh well, it's not there, but we're going there. Um So there's there's a couple of things that we need to take care of before that. I mean, not least of which is design the rocket that we're looking for. Um but if we go in here, obviously we, we wanna grab some stuff from Gene, you're right man, thumbs up. We wanna get this uh, explore the Mun contract. Uh, lots of lots of things to do here, get get into orbit, get some science data, land on it. Like, we, we can do this. That, that's well within our third flight capabilities. Third flight? Yeah, I think I think this is our third flight. Um, and at some point I would like to put a station up to start capturing Kerbals, but we'll probably do that in between the Mun and Minmus. I'm not, I'm not sure. That, that seems like, like a good idea. Uh, the other thing, if we go into the moon, oh my goody god, we need all this this science stuff here like so bad um, I, I'm literally gonna bankrupt myself like watch my watch my money's going down buying all these bits because they're just so monumentally useful uh, so we got like the magno magnometer magnometer mag magnetometer there's another there's another T in it magnetometer there we go um, we got the keythane scanner um, the altimetry sensor uh, which is not as great as it sounds um, like it's all nice having a map but when all you've got is elevation uh, uh, batteries of course really important the material science bay uh, stop important and I'm not overly bothered about the comms unit uh, now unfortunately with 15 science we can't really do much else but let's see if we can spend any more money anywhere um, let's, let's throw a, let's get a fin just in case we need to throw it on the bottom of our rocket and we've got all those already right okay so now a little bit of thinking needs to be done so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say i will see you in the vab in a moment when i've like sort of sketched out some ideas for a lander all right guys so this is what i've ended up with uh i've called it appropriately frankenstein's rocket because uh a lot of things have just kind of been a little bit bolted on uh, we've got a keythane scanner there, we've got a uh, radar altimeter, our magno magnetometer. Oh, one day I'll learn to spell that, uh, to say that word right. We've got a, um, a lot of... Oh, well I did have a lot of um, batteries on here, obviously I turned symmetry off when I put these in place. Oh, why won't these go now? That's probably why they went so easily last time. Okay. There we go. So we've got a lot of batteries because uh, we have no power generation, uh, which is a little bit, little bit annoying. But there we go. That's that's what we have to do. Um, plus, these tanks are decouplable because these are kind of my landing stage. We'll land. We'll do our business. We'll transfer all the fuel, in, fuel, fuel into the middle, and then we'll use this one to get home. I know this is a, a relatively, relatively well tested. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? System. Uh, that I have used before. Um, and what are we going to use to lift it? Well, I present to you Betsy, my light li lifter. This should hopefully have all the delta V according to these calculations here to make it to the moon. I mean, this is low orbit, this is to the moon, this is the landing and coming back. I think I got it all right. Should we, should we go and have a look? Uh, I'm probably just going to record and do a little bit of post commentary on the flight because flights are. Uh, they're a little bit long and boring if we just we just leave it running so yeah that's what we're gonna do so first flight subject to a little bit of impromptu testing unfortunately uh, as you can see this first bit is a little bit wobbly a little bit all over the place but that's all right there's stuff that can do deal with this staging however oh uh, just look at that that was terrible um but anyway Everything kind of went all right because we are in and I throw up inverted commas hard mode um, I throw the inverted commas up because we're using mods and that's never gonna be like really Difficult is it? But yeah, because we're doing that. There's no reverts. There's no quick saves. There's no going back So what I essentially had there was a 20,000 Kerbolian bucks uh, test program um, And it shouldn't have happened because I have faced this problem so many times before but we'll talk about that in a bit what we're going to talk about right now is the opportunity to um grab a load of science here which I, which i did uh, i unfortunately jumped out and got the uh surface sample and eva before i got the 
goo canister and the materials bay which meant i couldn't get back in the pod and i couldn't do those so we got some little bits of science here i wish i'd got a little bit more because then we could have had things like fuel lines and um what's the other thing is called support struts which would have solved all the issues that i could ever have with this particular mission but what well, we're going to go back to a tried and tested method of how to fix the issue that you've just seen that, that I had. Um, it is a problem that I have quite a lot where when I perform my staging, somehow the tops of the things that I'm throwing away curve inward and get get the get the rocket in the middle. Uh, easy fix, load of separatrons on the top pointing out. Obviously you can't just have that either because that means it just does a complete loop and it hits the bottom of your rocket instead. So I then balance that out with other separatrons at the bottom pulling it all away, which does incredibly well and for some reason actually improved my stability in the air and you saw there the staging went smoothly I, I could not have actually asked for anything better than that uh, and now we're beginning our ascent climb into into orbit uh, following what I consider to be my standard trajectory I, I go up um, for my first stage that is literally my timing I don't I don't look to see how high I am or anything like that I just once my solid boosters go I start turning over um, and then over the course of the next sort of 30, 40 kilometers, I bring myself down towards the horizon until my apple apps is somewhere about 80 kilometers. Uh, I then kill all engines and wait to get up to said apple apps, or at least close enough that my short attention span can deal with. Uh, I then start thrusting forwards, and you'll notice there that I'm watching my peri apps as well as my apple apps, trying to bring these two numbers into roughly the same. I'm going to say alignment, but that, that this wasn't where the sentence was supposed to go when I started. Trying to bring those two numbers to the same number. Yes, same level. Uh, as we have just achieved around about here, it's close enough. Like I always like to keep them around the same, but that means that you've got to go fly around the orbit and do little bits at little places. As long as they're both above the, above the atmosphere, I cast that as a bit of a win. Um, what I do not class as a bit of the win is the fact that I've got my exterior boosting stage still attached to my ship when I'm in orbit. Uh, this is basically an artifact of me being used to um, having fuel lines, which means all the fuel would have been draining from the outside into the middle, so I could have got rid of those in atmosphere and then still had full fuel cell in the middle to get up into a circularized burn. <laughs> Obviously, this early on, we don't have that. So we get to watch those spin away into orbit. And I'm, I don't know, we'll de-Kessler at some point, either using the uh, the, the uh, cancel flight mechanism, or maybe we'll go out and, and zap some stuff with lasers or something. I'm, I'm not sure. That That is by far the preferred method. Now, you'll notice there that I actually dumped my transfer stage because I'd run out of fuel. Numbers weren't quite as good as I thought they were. But I do know that this... Uh, quad engine system on my on my lander stage here has more than enough fuel to circularize around the moon land on the moon and get me back home so you know everything is all good and as the only footage that i have between now and then is me playing around with maneuver nodes and the hud and all these other things we're going to skip forwards a little bit into the moon sphere of influence so i'm fairly confident in my flight plan here if not my abilities to pull it off um so we're going to take a kerbal out and we're going to do some science because we're in the the, the outer orbits of the moon um this is one of the places where we want to go around and get everything that we can sort of science wise whilst i remember that it is a thing to be doing uh one problem that i did have and i'm not sure where i've picked this up obviously you, all, you guys all know i've taken a bit of a break from kerbal like trying to gather some more inspiration and stuff and somewhere during playing all the other games that i've been playing i have learned that pressing shift makes me go forwards which as you guys will know when you're on a jetpack is not what you want to be pressing so if you see me kind of mucking around in um on the jetpack not really appearing to do what i should be doing it's because my muscle memory has got a little bit messed up with different games but enough of my excuses of why i can't fly very well we're down at periaps which means it's time to circularize our burn well not circular ca to capture our orbit um i want to bring it down the periaps down to or oh, about 10 20 kilometers because well, let's be honest, we want to be able to see the moon when we're going around it and not just be, oh, look at that rock over there somewhere. And already, even at these altitudes, I'm starting to think, mm, where shall I land? What, what should I go in? Uh, at the moment, my eye is on that right-hand crater. 
Um, though that will change when we get back round, because obviously with the moon's rotational spin to deal with, because, you know, there's other types of rotational things. Um, yeah, with, with its spin to deal with, that crater is actually getting uh, exceedingly close to the dark side. And I know I'm not going to be hanging around forever, but I would still like light for as long as possible. So I change my maneuver node, shift the inclination to the other direction off of my orbit. And yeah, just basically fly by the numbers now. Uh, I'm, I'm confident that the trajectories I've laid up are correct. So we fly around, we watch the moon, and then boom! That dark spot there is exactly the one we're going for. So I point myself retrograde and then look along the line of my engines to make sure that I'm going exactly where I want to be going. I am, so I start configuring myself for landing. Uh, I spin myself round. I should eventually get my landing gear out. And then I'm like, hmm, low orbit science. So we get Jeb out. We do some stuff. We get the magnet, magnot, magnot. It's, it's when I start the nom. That's I want to say nom. It's nometer. There we go. Magnometer up. <laughs> um, get my landing gear out. Well, uh, and, and then come down, trying to pick my landing spot. Uh, at this point, I am just looking around, going, "Oh, that big dark patch, that small white patch. I'm not sure which ones I want to go for." And up there, I've selected it. You notice when I uh, circle it with my mouse there, that is definitely the one I'm going for. Looking straight down. I kind of get an idea of when I'm fly in, flying completely like over the top of my of my target site. Try and nail all my forwards velocity, which on the advanced nav ball is quite easy. You just wait for this blue circle to come up and then you, you, your uh, retrograde is somewhere up top somewhere. Uh, we spend a little bit of time pirouetting around, just making sure that Jeb gets to see all the glories. That and then start getting our uh, downwards velocity in check. Um, now, I could have waited a little bit longer for that hard burn there, but it was getting incredibly close and I was starting to feel a little bit scared. So we, we came to a dead stop a little way up and then just drifted down slowly and made contact like that. Well, wasn't that better than doing it all in real time? Oh, that could have been like boring as hell, right? Well, I, I think it could anyway. Right, so we are on the moon with Jeb. You, you saw the trials and tribulations yet seconds ago. I don't, I don't know why I'm pointing these out to you guys know but whilst we're on the moon we could immediately jump out plant a flag get some science done things like this but i am a seasoned kerbal player i have done this contract thing before i know if we've got a list of ticks here for the moon stuff what we should do is come in here and hey hey gene sorry i keep forgetting so, so there we go we plant a flag on the moon for lots of money i want to plant flag on moon for lots of money science data from around the moon it is significant. Uh, we get some science, we get more money, which is which is the important thing. You, you may remember that I was running out of money, um, doing quite quite well. So we are at pre-crash test flight uh, money situations already. So if we close this and come back to the tracking station, get to Frankenstein's rocket, and then then we're gonna we're gonna get it jab out. We're gonna run around. We're gonna do some science. We're going to do all the science that we can from inside the rocket first. So, first thing we do, observe the mystery goo. Uh, it's less dense here. I don't think I'm going to read out all these things at once. I mean, that's... Uh, you may leave a sample bay door open for the moon and do something else for a while. Yeah, I've already done that. A um, hundred science for that. That's awesome. Uh, magnetometer, my favourite word of today. Um, move that out. That's, that's awesome. Oh, we didn't do any uh scan so one of the main problems that i realized I'd, I'd had is this scan sat and this key thing both need constant power and obviously i've not unlocked any of my um my solar technology yet so we're kind of a bit stuck uh another thing that i'm going to do whilst i think about it is i'm going to open this fuel and i'm going to open this fuel and it's all going to go in here um, because we're not bringing these out oh, damn it i keep forgetting you can't close those when they're running because we're not taking these out of tanks back with us we're going to dump these outer tanks here and just bring the inner core with us which hopefully you know if nothing else it will leave us a nice marker to tell us where we've been um which is gonna mean we got a little bit of boring stuff just do it just doing this quickly um i do wonder whether we're gonna use all three tanks or whether we're still gonna have some spare fuel on the moon um spare fuel could be quite good i mean we could come up with the uh, attachment system there we go. 
this one's going to have some spare fuel in it. Yeah, we could come up with the attachment system and drain it and, and, and stuff. Because, you know, that's what the attachment system's all about, is making use of these weird things that you forgot about and stuff. Also about forgetting, uh, fixing all your, your problems uh, in orbit, rather than having to send every vessel back down to to Kerbin. Why can't I turn around? I want to I wanna look that way, mate. There we go. Okay, hey, hey Jeb, let's put your rocket away. So first things first, let's take an EVA report um, from the Mun's Northwest Crater. Woo! Uh, surface sample, combination of basalt rock and brachia. Now, uh, now we want to plant a flag. Jeez, it's a lot to think about when you land on the moon, isn't there? Um, I've, I should have written a checklist. I, I always feel like I should have written the checklist, but hey, right, the site name. Um, Moon Touch, Touch Era 1, yep, because we are the first one to touch up the moon, and in fact, yeah, for, first one to touch up, apart from I can't type, the Moon, awesome, okay, brilliant, so that's that should be next to everything we want to do here, I mean, I wouldn't mind popping a few of these experiments away, oh, come on, get on, get on your thing there. No, uh, you're not liking it. Right, so let's pop all these science experiments away. Oh, away. And then hopefully, with the addition of a jetpack, we should be able to get a different EVA report by doing this. Yeah, awesome. That's that's exactly what I wanted. There we go. Little little, little pro tip there. Um, I, I should imagine most of you already know it, but just in case not. Okay, so I think that's all we want to do here. I don't see anything of any note to look at. No, I mean, we've got Kerbin coming up for an eclipse possibly soon, but that is a long, long time away. Okay, so let's have a look at our contracts. Let's see what we've got. Applied a flag on the moon. Uh, transfer recover scientif scientific data from the moon. So let's... Can we do a, a crew report and send it off? I don't know where my... There it is. Let's do a crew report and send it away, and we should be able to achieve that one. Uh, crew report. Ta da Awesome, so that's all those done. We want to uh, get some scientific data from around the moon, which means we need to get up. This is charging, how is this charging? I oh, know it's going down, is that because of my SAS? There we go. Alright, well, I think we're about ready for the return journey. Are you guys ready for the return journey? Let's do that, let's just throttle up a little bit, break that. Ah, uh, you guys thought I was going to uh, spin off, didn't you? To be honest, I thought I was going to spin off for a second there. Right, we're going to put on our SES and we're going to go that way, because that way's home. Wow. Or is it? Should we, uh, hang on about this, toggle the magnetometer. Which way do we want to go? We want to go that way. Which way are we going? I can't, I can't quite tell. That's good. Let's go east and see if that is the way we want to be going. I think it is. I, I, I really do think it is. Okay, so uh, flying around should be a relatively... Flying around. Flying back home should be a relatively easy process. I think if we're pointed in this direction, yeah, we should be able just to nail it that way. If, if, if all things go well, we should be able to just nail it that way. We should really get into a circular orbit... Um, yeah, uh, like, st stabilise ourselves in a circular orbit, and get a, a nice circular thing going around, and then thrust from the other side of the moon to get the far side of the Apple apps going up a uh, retrograde distance. But, you know, whatever. We're, we're just going to go over this way. Oh, that's a funky-looking moon right there. A funky-looking crater right there, isn't it? Oh, I wish we kind of wish we'd gone there. Oh, hold engines. We are going to crash into the planet. Ah, oh, I spent too long talking to you guys again. It's always your guys' fault. Oh. Okay, let's... Uh, I'm, I'm not really blaming your guys for my inability to keep track of what I'm doing. Um, if I could, that'd be great. I'll, I'll, I'll get on with that. All right, let's have a look at where we're going to crash, at least. Um, oh, look at that. That's terrible. Could we... Can we perk up our orbit a little bit? We've got a lot of fuel left, right? Let's let's see if we can just. Um... God, I don't know. I don't know what we could just undo. Hopefully, we can just 
open this orbit up a little bit bring ourselves into a periaps and then think about how we're actually no no that's not going to work oh well let's just crash into the atmosphere at full speed then i mean why not what what is the worst that could happen i mean honestly worst that could happen is we go th glitch through all the uh the the safety margins and smash into the planet as hard as possible which wouldn't be good in fact that would be very bad very very bad okay well here we come we're, we're, we're oh, man we are crashing down at 2.9 kilometers per second three kilometers per second 3.1 kilometers per second uh let, let's try and see what our uh, our speed limit through the atmosphere is going to be because this will be a wreck oh jesus no we don't i don't want to land here look it's so dark what am i supposed to do it's just so dark well you're just gonna have to take my word on it that at the moment i think we're coming down over a solid surface maybe we can get some uh, funky far distance eva and surface sample reports and things that, that would be useful right uh so we're coming down over green shores i'm not actually sure where we are um i don't think i've ever been here before let's call up the map while we've got time we are on the other side of the planet from where we normally come down that's that's all right that's all right it means we're not going to get much for our um retrieval costs but we can live with that we can indeed live with that uh so as always i'm waiting till the last possible second to pop my chute because uh, i i hate waiting for things like that uh, now now seems good if we're 400 meters away from the water and there's very much a, a a step up here i reckon we're quite close let's take the moment to go inside and have a look at our vertical speed radar altimeter uh, we're a little bit higher up than I thought I was. I was hoping to be under 200 metres here. But that's all right. I can just talk to you some more about how I really hate landings because, oh, these things just take forever, right? I mean, that's literally the whole reason. Um, so, summing up on the mission, I'm quite glad how it went. We, we could have done a few things better with the lifting stage and we could have forgotten things like this scan sat and the keythane detector because well as i said last time because we've forgotten that we've got no solar panels and uh, yeah that's that's a, uh, yeah i wouldn't feel right if i didn't mess one thing up per mission it, it would it would be very i i wouldn't be happy oh right no 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 uh, that's good enough can we roll off that and let jeb out yes we can Awesome. Well, it's time to get some extra orbital uh, not orbital science, extra ground science. So we've recorded the. Oh, we're on the shores again. No, that's that's not very good at all. That's not that's not what I want. That's, no. Well, we can get the full full stuff here, but yeah, look, see, that's that's horrible. It's terrible. Let's just get up there and grab it. Can we not get up there and grab it? I saw a... <gasps> no, 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 no. Oof. Okay, I think we're just going to recover Jeb. And then we'll recover from the thing. Okay, so let's see what Jeb had on him. He didn't... He wasn't carrying much. He's literally just got the science from the shores. This isn't the big reveal, but we will uh, use it as a little reveal, I suppose. Uh, so he got a whopping 9, 10, 11 points of science there. 11.4 points of science. And we got Jeb home. Now, more importantly, much more importantly, Frankenstein's rocket. We're going to bring that home. Right, so we've got 440 signs from that, guys. Wow, what a haul. Leave me to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure. I'll see you next time where I think we're actually going to set up a station to rescue Kerbals. Though we might be going to Minmus. Depends what I can be talked into. Anyway, I'll see you then when we do that. Bye.